Imagine a world where reality itself is up for grabs, where the line between what's real and what's digital is so blurred you can't tell the difference. Sounds like sci-fi, right? Well, buckle up, because that world is knocking on our door, and your smartphone is the key. Hey there, you brilliant Bunsen burners of curiosity. Theodore here, ready to blow your minds with today's deep dive into the wild world of augmented reality. We've got some seriously smart cookies joining us to explore how AR is about to flip our reality on its head. From shopping to healthcare, nothing is safe from this digital takeover. So grab your virtual thinking caps and let's unravel this reality bending roller coaster together. and welcome. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the future of augmented reality. We're talking 2024 and beyond. You guys know how much we love geeking out about emerging tech, and it's clear from all your messages that you're just as captivated by AR's potential as we are. And let me tell you, there is so much to unpack. We're wading through market predictions, the latest tech journals, even a fascinating piece from Adweek, all to bring you the most interesting, most relevant insights on where AR is headed. I'm excited to dig in. Let's talk numbers first. FX Media dropped a pretty mind-blowing prediction. They're saying the AR market could hit almost two trillion trillion with a T by 2032. Yeah, the growth is seriously impressive, something like a 45.4% compound annual growth rate. Mm. To give you a sense of the scale, right now we're looking at about $63 billion. So yeah, this isn't just like a wave. It's a tidal wave of change. So AR isn't just going to be everywhere. It's going to be everything. But, and here's what I find interesting. It's not all about those futuristic headsets, is it? You're spot on. Finance Online actually points out that most of us are already using AR without even realizing it. Those Snapchat filters everyone loves. Or those shopping apps that let you try on clothes virtually. Boom. Augmented reality in action. Okay, you're totally right. I never even thought of it like that. It's like AR is hiding in plain sight. Speaking of shopping, I was blown away by what companies like IKEA are doing with their IKEA Place app. Right. IKEA is a textbook example of how AR is revolutionizing retail. Think about it. Instead of just seeing a static picture of a sofa, you get to place a 3D model to scale right there in your living room. No more wondering if that armchair is going to fit through the door. Seriously, such a game changer. And it's not just furniture. I tried a makeup app that let me try on different lipstick shades. It was shockingly accurate. That's the beauty of AR. It removes so much uncertainty, makes the online shopping experience way more tangible. Finances Online reports that a crazy 61% of shoppers now actually prefer stores that offer AR experiences. And honestly, I get it. If I can try something on virtually and feel confident about it, I'm way more likely to click buy. Totally agree. It just makes the whole decision process so much easier. All right, let's break this down. Imagine having a personal shopper, interior designer, and fashion guru all rolled into one, right in your pocket. AR is transforming shopping by letting you visualize products in your space or on your body before you buy. It's like having x-ray vision for retail. This technology isn't just making shopping more fun. It's reducing returns, saving time, and helping us make more informed decisions. It's a win-win for both consumers and businesses. But AR's impact is so much bigger than just shopping, isn't it? We're talking healthcare, education, even, even this. Assisting with things like blood draws, which honestly sounds like magic. It does, right? Yeah. Finance Online actually highlighted how AR could be used to map veins in real time, potentially making the process much less painful, especially for anyone who's terrified of needles like myself. Where do I sign up? Honestly, anything that makes those doctor's office visits a little bit less stressful, I am here for it. It's all about making the invisible visible and using that to our advantage. I mean, Finance Online even mentioned companies using AR for training new employees, letting them learn in a much more interactive, immersive way. That is so cool. Okay, we can't talk about AR without mentioning gaming. I mean, Pokemon Go was a global phenomenon for a reason. It really put AR on the map, no doubt about it. Binance Online says that back in 2018 alone, consumers spent something like $3.5 billion on AR and VR games. Wow, that is a lot of virtual creatures being caught. But it goes to show you how eager people are to embrace this technology. 
So is it all smooth sailing for AR from here? What do the experts say? Well, FX Media brings up a super important point about potential downsides. They highlight the potential impact that excessive AR use could have on, well, our mental well-being. Okay, so this is where things get really interesting and maybe a little concerning. For sure. AR has these incredible benefits, but we also have to think about the risks of becoming overly immersed in these digital worlds. Could we be talking about things like addiction, social isolation, even blurring the lines between what's real and what's virtual? That's a lot to unpack. It feels like we're just starting to grapple with these questions now as AR is becoming more and more common. You said it. It's not just about the technology itself. It's how we choose to use it and the impact those choices might have, not just on our own lives, but on society as a whole. Speaking of blurring lines, FX Media dives into this really cool concept called mixed reality, which is basically where AR and VR start to, you know, blend together. Now we're talking. Yeah. It's where things get really wild. Instead of just overlaying digital elements onto the real world, imagine stepping into these environments where the physical and digital are completely intertwined. Like, they're inseparable. So not just seeing a Pokemon on the sidewalk, but maybe stepping into a virtual Pokemon world where I can battle other players in real time, all of us with our own, you know, awesome avatars. Exactly. And this mixed reality space is where some of the most exciting and potentially disruptive things are happening. Finance Online and Adweek had some cool examples. Toyota, for instance, is using virtual test drives, letting potential buyers actually experience what it's like to be behind the wheel of a car without ever setting foot in a dealership. And Allianz, the insurance company, is using mixed reality so that homeowners can visualize potential hazards in their homes. Mm -hmm. Everything from faulty wiring to, like, the dangers of an overflowing bathtub. Okay, that's amazing. And also a little bit terrifying. I think that perfectly sums up mixed reality. It's incredible. It's potentially life-changing. But it also demands that we think really carefully about how these technologies are designed, implemented, and most importantly, how they're used. And speaking of responsibility, FX Media points out this trend that's really interesting, the rise of what they're calling AR super apps. You know, I have to admit, that one kind of threw me for a loop. What exactly are AR super apps? So think about it this way. Right now, we've got all these separate AR apps for different things, gaming, shopping, navigating a new city. Ugh, tell me about it. I have like a million apps on my phone already. Exactly. The idea behind super apps is to create one single platform that integrates all those different AR experiences. So you could go from virtually trying on a new outfit to, boom, getting AR directions to the closest coffee shop all within the same app. Okay, that does sound incredibly convenient. No more endlessly switching between apps. Exactly. And from a business perspective, it creates this powerful ecosystem for AR experiences, kind of like what we've seen with smartphone app stores. So instead of downloading a ton of individual AR apps, maybe we'll start downloading AR platforms that host tons of different experiences. It's definitely a possibility. And it just shows how much the AR landscape is changing. New companies are popping up every day. The big players like Apple and Google are investing tons of money. And that line between the physical world and the digital world it's getting blurrier all the time. It sounds like the AR revolution is in full swing. Oh, it absolutely is. And as we navigate this new world, it's crucial to remember that we're not just passive bystanders. We have a voice in how ARs are developed and how it ultimately impacts our lives. And even with all this incredible tech on the horizon, we're still seeing a lot of AR experiences happening on the devices we're already carrying around our smartphones. That's right. Finance Online really emphasizes that, you know, even though AR headsets and glasses are getting better, smartphones are still the most common way that people experience AR. And it makes sense, right? Smartphones are becoming crazy powerful. They have amazing cameras and processors that can actually handle these sophisticated AR experiences. Plus, pretty much everyone has a smartphone. It's a much easier sell than convincing someone to buy a whole separate AR headset. Exactly. And as that technology keeps evolving, we can expect those mobile AR experiences to become even more impressive, seamless, even more ingrained into our daily lives. Oh, even with smartphones being so central to AR, there's still a lot of buzz about those dedicated AR devices, things like glasses and headsets. Yeah, and for good reason. Those devices have the potential to be even more immersive and interactive than a smartphone screen could ever be. Imagine just walking down the street and having information about your surroundings, like directions or social media updates, just pop up in your field of vision. No more staring down at your phone all the time. Right. That seamless integration of the digital and the physical. But it feels like we've been hearing about AR glasses forever. 
and they haven't quite taken off. I wonder what the holdup is. Seriously, what gives? Is it a technology thing, a fashion thing, a little bit of both? It's a tough balancing act. Creating AR glasses that are lightweight, that are comfortable to wear, that have a wide field of view, and that are actually enjoyable to use. That's a huge challenge, technologically speaking. And then there's the whole cool factor. Like, are people actually ready to walk around looking like they stepped out of a sci-fi movie? I'm not sure I'm ready. Never underestimate the power of fashion, even in the tech world. The good news is that companies are making progress. The latest generation of AR glasses is getting sleeker, more stylish, and definitely more user-friendly. And our friends at FX Media tell us that companies are also working on wearable AR controllers. That could be a game changer in terms of how we interact with these AR environments. Imagine controlling things with a flick of your wrist or even just your voice. These advancements are key to making these AR glasses feel less like a clunky piece of tech and more like an organic extension of how we experience the world. So it's a race then. Tech companies are trying to make the hardware better, make the user experience smoother, while also hoping that we all just kind of get used to the idea of wearing AR glasses as easily as we wear sunglasses today. Exactly. And it's a race that has the potential to completely transform how we interact with technology, with each other, even just with the world around us. It's almost too much to wrap your head around. And we're really just scratching the surface of what AR can do. Both Finance Online and FX Media highlighted AR's potential in healthcare, for example. And it's not just about the cool gadgets, although those are pretty amazing too. In a lot of ways, healthcare is the perfect fit for AR. Imagine surgeons being able to visualize a patient's internal organs in 3D during an operation. Or medical students being able to practice procedures on, like, virtual patients where there's absolutely no risk. You got it. AR has the potential to make healthcare more accurate, more effective, and even more accessible to people who might live in areas without a lot of specialists. And let's not forget about education. We've talked about how AR can make learning more engaging for kids, but imagine the possibilities for higher education, professional training. The potential is limitless. Mm. Imagine these immersive simulations where students can experience historical events firsthand, or virtual labs where they can run experiments without any risk. It's like taking learning and bringing it to life. It's engaging, it's memorable, and it makes education accessible to anyone, regardless of their background. Exactly. AR can make learning fun and effective for students of all ages, of all backgrounds. And for students with learning disabilities, it can be tailored to their specific needs. It's like breaking down those barriers to education, creating a more inclusive learning environment. And those examples are just the tip of the iceberg, right? What other fields are being impacted by this technology, you know, for the greater good? Oh, the possibilities are truly mind boggling. We're seeing AR being used for environmental conservation, for disaster relief efforts. Imagine being able to visualize the effects of climate change using AR, making the urgency of that situation real for people. Or using AR to guide first responders during a natural disaster, giving them real-time information that can help them save lives. It's amazing to see how this technology is being used to address these huge challenges that we're facing. It just goes to show that AR isn't just some shiny new toy. It's a tool that, when used thoughtfully, can have a really positive impact on the world. Imagine being able to attend a concert virtually and feeling like you're right there in the crowd, even if you're miles away. Or exploring a museum on the other side of the world, interacting with artifacts as if you were standing right in front of them. It's like the world becomes limitless. Benefits everyone. Okay, you mentioned AR still being in its early stages, and it makes me think about the metaverse. That word gets thrown around a lot, especially in conversations about AR and VR. It's being touted as the next big thing, but honestly, I think a lot of people are still confused about what it actually is. It's definitely a bit of a head scratcher. The metaverse is still a very fluid concept, but at its core, it's about building these persistent, shared virtual worlds that people can access and interact with using different technologies, including AR and VR. So it's more than just putting on a headset and playing a game, right? It's about stepping into a fully realized digital world where you can work, you can hang out with friends, go shopping, even attend events all within this virtual space. Exactly. It's like creating a parallel universe that exists alongside our physical world, but it's constantly evolving and growing based on what users do. That's both incredibly cool and kind of overwhelming. Where do you even begin to wrap your head around something like that? It's a lot to take in. Okay, let's simplify this metaverse concept. Think of it as a 3D internet where you can fully immerse yourself. Instead of just watching a video of a concert, you could feel like you're actually there, 
surrounded by other fans. Or imagine attending a class where you can manipulate 3D models of molecules with your hands. The metaverse has the potential to break down physical barriers, making experiences more accessible and interactive for everyone. It's not about replacing our physical world, but enhancing and expanding our capabilities in exciting new ways. And honestly, even the experts don't have all the answers yet. We're still figuring out what the metaverse will ultimately become. Mm. But we're already seeing companies and individuals experiment with virtual real estate, with virtual fashion, with virtual universities that offer courses and degrees. It's mind-blowing. People are buying virtual land, building businesses, forming communities completely within these digital spaces. It makes you wonder, is this the future? AR has the power to disrupt entire industries. It could fundamentally change how we live, how we work, even how we interact with the world around us. And speaking of disruption, one area that seems ripe for an AR takeover is advertising and marketing. Imagine a world where billboards come to life as you walk by, or you can try on clothes virtually just by walking past your favorite store. Oh, we're already seeing glimpses of that. Hmm. AR gives marketers this whole new toolbox for creating these really immersive, really interactive experiences. It's not about those static ads anymore. It's about blending the physical and the digital, bringing products and services to life right in front of the consumer. Exactly. It's not passive anymore. Consumers can actually interact with products, see how things would look, how they'd feel in their own environment. It creates a whole new level of engagement. You got it. And it has the potential to make advertising more personalized, more engaging, and ultimately more effective. Because for the consumer, it takes away a lot of the guesswork. Absolutely. But with any new frontier, there are new challenges. Like, how do you even measure the success of AR advertising? It's not as easy as counting clicks on a banner ad anymore. It's a question that marketers are wrestling with right now. Mm. It requires a whole new way of thinking. It's not just about impressions. It's about measuring engagement, how long someone interacts with an AR experience, how it influences their feelings about a brand. It's a lot more nuanced. So it's about understanding the impact of those immersive experiences, not just whether someone saw an ad or not. Exactly. It requires creativity. It requires data analysis. And it requires a willingness to embrace new ways of thinking about what makes advertising effective. OK, so we've talked about how companies are using AR to change things like shopping and entertainment. But there's another side to this technology that I find incredibly exciting, and that's its potential to do good to actually address real world problems, AR with a conscience, right? Yes, 100%. It's something I'm incredibly passionate about. AR isn't just about making money or creating cool experiences. It's about making a positive impact. And we're already seeing inspiring examples of this happening. I'm all ears. What kind of initiatives are we talking about here? Well, let's take healthcare, for instance. We've already touched on how AR is being used to train doctors and surgeons, guide them during complex procedures, even help patients understand their own medical conditions better. It's like giving doctors and patients these superpowers. In a way, it is. It's about empowering them to deliver and receive better, more effective care. But the potential for good goes way beyond just healthcare. Education is another area where AR can make a world of difference. Imagine classrooms where students can go on these amazing virtual field trips, explore the human body from the inside out, even dissect a frog without, well, having to dissect a frog. It's learning brought to life. It's engaging. It's memorable. And it really has the power to make education accessible to everyone. Exactly. It levels the playing field. AR can make learning fun and effective, regardless of your background. And for students with learning disabilities, it opens up a whole new world of personalized learning experiences. It's incredible. It's about inclusivity, breaking down those barriers, and the applications don't stop there, do they? What other areas are being positively impacted by AR? Honestly, the sky's the limit. We're seeing AR used for everything from environmental conservation to disaster relief. Yeah. Imagine using AR to visualize the effects of climate change, bringing that urgency to life for people. Or using AR to guide first responders during a natural disaster, giving them access to real-time information that could help them save lives. It's amazing to see this technology used to address some of the most pressing problems we're facing. I'm so glad we're talking about this because I think it's easy to get caught up in the cool factor of AR and forget about its potential to do good. But as with any powerful tool, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are legitimate concerns that need to be addressed, right? Absolutely. As we embrace the potential of AR, 
We have to do it with our eyes wide open. We have to acknowledge the opportunities, but also the potential challenges. One thing that comes up a lot is this whole idea of AR blurring the lines between the physical world and the digital world. And on the one hand, that opens up all these amazing possibilities for connection, for creativity, for shared experiences. Imagine being able to attend a concert virtually and feeling like you're right there in the crowd, even if you're miles away. Or exploring a museum on the other side of the world, interacting with artifacts as if you were standing right in front of them. It's like the world becomes limitless. But at the same time, this constant merging of the real and the virtual has to raise some red flags, right? What happens when it becomes hard to tell the difference between what's real and what's been digitally enhanced? That's a really valid concern. Mm -hmm. If we're constantly surrounded by these digitally augmented environments, it could affect how we perceive reality, our ability to engage with the physical world, even our relationships with each other. It's like the old saying, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. You got it. It's about <laughs> cool. balance. Yeah. We need to find ways to integrate AR into our lives in a way that enhances our experiences, not overwhelms them. We have to be mindful of the potential for addiction, for social isolation, and for losing those genuine human connections. It's like with anything else, right? Moderation and self-awareness are key. We need to be aware of how much time we're spending in these augmented environments and make sure we're not losing sight of real-world interactions. I couldn't agree more. I know we could talk about AR all day, but we're running out of time. But before we go, I want to leave our listeners with a final thought, something to chew on. Ooh, I love a good cliffhanger. Lay it on me. As AR keeps evolving, blurring the lines between the physical and digital, it really makes you wonder, will AR fundamentally change how we experience the world, or will it mainly be a tool for, you know, entertainment and shopping? That's the million dollar question. And I think it's one that each of us will answer in our own way as we navigate this exciting new world. That feels like the perfect note to end on. A huge thank you to our expert for joining us today and sharing these incredible insights. And to everyone listening, thank you for being here. Keep exploring, keep asking the big questions, and keep your minds open to the incredible possibilities that the future holds. We'll see you next time for another deep dive. And there you have it, my fellow reality benders. We've peeked behind the curtain of our augmented future, and it's equal parts exciting and terrifying. Will AR make our lives a tech utopia or turn us into smartphone zombies? The jury's still out. But one thing's for sure. Reality as we know it is getting a major upgrade, whether we like it or not. So keep those minds open, your apps updated, and remember, in the world of AR, reality is what you make it. Until next time, Stay curious and keep it real or virtual. Whatever floats your digital boat.